Hi there, my name is Simon Tompkins. I'm field application engineer for the Energy and Power Business Unit at Richardson RFPD. We're a global distributor, mainly involved in high power applications. I'd like to thank you for joining us today. I would also like to thank our guest for joining us. He's Guy Moxie and he is Senior Marketing Director for Wolfspeed. And today, uh, Guy will help me to understand uh, Wolfspeed's off silicon carbide offering and the advantages it brings to energy storage systems. Hey Guy, how's it going? Hi Simon, pleasure to be here, thanks. Yeah, so with the increase in availability of wide gap, band gap semiconductors, in particular silicon carbide from Wolfspeed, could you help us to understand where the opportunity is for Wolfspeed SICK products in energy storage systems in both the residential and uh, commercial space, please? Yeah, absolutely, Simon. And, you know, this slide is a pretty good visual. This shows a residential system. But, you know, the general principle is we work so hard to snatch this renewable energy from the sun or from the wind or from hydro that, you know, across that conversion system downstream, it has to be so efficient. You know, every drop is sacred. So silicon carbide versus silicon brings that greater efficiency, greater power density. And, when you apply that to real life situations, you know, residential or, or commercial utility, central systems, you know, if you if you can be one or two percent more efficient, that's absolutely huge. If you can be 30 to 50 percent smaller, think of a residential system in your garage, you know, size matters. And overall system costs, if they've got to be deployed throughout the world in very high volume, every every cent or penny counts. So silicon carbide is really making effects into dramatic effects into these systems. And just to zoom into a little bit more detail from a power electronics point of view and you or I are apps engineers, there's some great common topologies. You know, if you look at a, a PV system into an energy storage system, it's DC generated and DC charging a battery. If you take, you know, uh, a, a offboard charging system for, for an EV car, it's taking AC in, charging a DC, DC car battery, put some energy storage in the middle and it's DC. There's some common architectures that we can really focus down on and, and really exploit. And, you know, I mentioned this shows here a residential system, but a three phase commercial system has the same principles, although it's higher voltage, different uh, architectures. And then if you look at the, the bigger picture and tie it all together, then all this convergence that we see, let's take a, an offboard charging superstation that's generating its own energy from its PV. And it's got its own behind the fence battery storage. And then, you know, that battery then is used as the buffer to charge the electric vehicles. Again, these same fundamental common circuit topologies that we can make more efficient, we will make them smaller and we can make them lower cost. I think that does that kind of answer your question? Yeah, that's a great uh, um, overview. Thanks um, of those, you know, typical architectures and where silicon carbide fits in. I mean, you know, design engineers, customers, companies that are looking to get into this or develop products uh, to complement uh, existing uh, technologies. Um, they might be interested to know how Wolfspeed could, where they could use Wolfspeed products to scale their designs um, for the different power levels. Have you got any steers on that, please? Yeah, I mean, that that's the, 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 the key question, because, you know, if you're looking at this PV, you know, renewable energy, energy storage, charging type of, of market space. You know, it can go from anywhere from a few kilowatts up to up to almost a megawatt or more if you look at the big utility size sort of scale. So it's all down to, to having the right product portfolio. And, you know, as the Americans say, not one sneaker fits all. And it's very true. Down at the lower end of the power, you you want you want the flexibility, you want the cost effectiveness, which is the discrete portfolio that we have at 600 through to you know 900, thousand volt, 1200 volt. As the power continuum then increases up into the sort of 50 kilowatts and above, the practicality of doing it discreetly becomes challenging. And then we bring in our Wolfpack modules 
Um, they scale up to 100 or so kilowatts. And then obviously we have our larger power modules that take you right through and beyond up to the megawatt stage. Um, you know, when you look at it from a, a portfolio point of view, you've got to have the voltage ratings up to 1700 volts because there's 1500 volt PV buses in, in, um, in uh, solar cells now. You've got to have a few amps up to a few hundred amps to get that scalability right from 10 kilowatts to almost a megawatt. And then you've got to have the different flavors of RDS on or, or ampacity depends on how your design and approach works. So it's all about having the right product and power can scaling and continuum. Good question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's clear to see that Wolf Speed's in a great position to support the design engineers, you know, to develop these class leading products that are needed for, uh, you know, this uh, this market space um, and for the main applications in energy storage. I mean, do Wolf Speed, do you have any typical examples and do you have any reference designs and any other tools that can help them along the way? Yeah, absolutely. You know, supporting design as much as possible is our role. You know, we never know the system better than our customers because we are component suppliers. But what we can do to help to increase their understanding, education, time to market is critical. And, you know, again, let's take that energy storage system and, and, and overlay the Wolfpack type of uh, modules. You have a lot of choice. You have the, the smaller Wolfpack um, FM3s, you have the larger GM3s, you have the half bridges, you have the six pack. So before you even start, where do you start? So what we do try and do as much as possible, and again, it brings it back to those lovely common denominator circuit blocks. We, we do our own reference designs and our evaluation kits. You can see here ranging from you know, 6.6 .6 kilowatt, which is down on that residential side, sort of power scaling, DC to DC, AC to DC, through to that 20, 30 kilowatt, which is that early entrance into the industrial through up to 60 kilowatt, which is your mainstay for, for, for string systems. We do the reference designs, we have the evaluation kits, and of course we have a great uh, simulation availability that we share as well you know you and i know the old saying simulate twice design one so it's not about just having the right products it's having the right support as well yeah it looks like great enablement i mean that's probably uh, it for an introduction today uh, so thanks for that guy it's a great discussion great having you on side to uh, to go over that with us uh, uh, just now absolute pleasure thanks for letting me join cheers no problem. And uh, I mean, thanks for everyone who joined the discussion today. I mean, if you'd like to learn more, then, you know, head over to our website. We've got a Gannon Sick uh, Tech Hub at richardsonrfpd.com. You'll find lots of more information on the silicon carbide products, as well as these typical examples, reference designs, evaluation kits, um, and their applications. And also, you know, the companion components that go uh, around this to hopefully help your uh, job easier to design these types of products. Thanks a lot.